figure. Wow. So what they call the official Linus? Um, I'm not sure exactly, but I think this one's Kiki and then this one's Kiara, but I'm not 100% sure. Kiara. Nice names. Yep. How do you think of that? I don't know. It wasn't my, my choice of name, but it was all right. It's nice. <laughs> Sounds like you got inspiration from Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Kiki, <yeah. laughs> um, Mashallah. They're really cute. Uh, no, Literally, just before before starting, there's a cat that came outside the house. This looked exactly like them, but like a bigger version. <laughs> so I gave it some milk and uh, some food as well. So I was thinking about you when I was doing that. Proper cute. Who's gonna look after? Who's gonna look after them after? You gonna mute? That's your mute. Sorry, the kittens did that. <laughs> you can see that they're half like Bengal, like they're, they've got like the similar to like Bengal, like, like what's what what breed are they? Do you know? Yeah, half, I'd be half, half Bengal, but I don't know exactly like what it is exact exact because Bengal tigers. Yeah, like they've got that similar like, you know. Hmm. They're really cute. Who's gonna look after them when you're at uni? Um, well, basically, they're not my kittens, and they're the gubby boys. So once he moves out, oh, they're his. I thought they're yours. Nah, what? Is that your idea? One was supposed to be mine, but then Dad's like, "No way!" And I said, "I'd rather them go with gubby boy." <laughs> no, I was thinking I'd borrow them off you every now and then. Awesome, guys. Works on. How you doing, Rob Sub? How you doing, everyone, man? We're good, we're good, we're good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, good, man. Mashallah, hair's growing, beard's growing. I can't remember how you without a beard now. I know, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm just thinking if, <laughs> like, what would it be without a beard now? You know, I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be a bit weird now. It looks yeah, good. But... It looks good. I think you should keep it. Yeah, man. It's just, we, should uh... do a, we should do a vote on Kahoot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Nas, you better show up today. So yeah, oh, <laughs> you're next on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Zaita, we've got a new new segment today under yeah. your basically under your thing, I believe. New we're launching. Woman. We're launching. We're launching the allegation corner today, inshallah. Oh, okay. So inshallah, every week we'll get one allegation. It's allegation corner better. That's what it is. It's beta mode, isn't it? That's brilliant, man. <laughs> VTech. <laughs> Inshallah, be good. So that's so that you can uh, you know look over that as well. Inshallah. Take care, of course. What are we gonna do when uh, we lockdown finishes and the mosques open? How's Khadam like gonna be? Um, I think we could do the exact same stuff, but just present it in person. Actually, I'm just shooting myself in the foot there. Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying no. I was thinking like it's really good online as well. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking maybe we can get we can get like a camera and stream that online as well, um, and whatever's going on, people can join who who can't come. Yeah, that's good. I was thinking of doing that for my daris as well, like you know when they do daris in the mosque. Yeah. All these people that can't come, who don't come to the mosque as well, <laughs> no, they can they can uh, join in as well. But what makes them if they're not going to come to the mosque? Do you reckon they? Okay, I'm I'm sure they'll click a video link, but you know. Yeah. I yeah, it's just this like this lockdown has opened a lot of doors, isn't it? Mm. Especially like me, like me traveling to Wol uh, Wolverhampton all the time, and like we also lose out on daras and vice versa with them. They lose out on six days. So I was thinking, I'll go wash my hands. I'll cut hands one sec. <laughs> Shalla. See you again. I'm not been getting been, been getting good views on the the stuff. We're trying to like um, split up the the videos of the whole day, Khadam lights into different segments. I don't know if you saw like uh, one of them with outreach on the fifteenth of fifteenth uh, of May. So like just easier to watch instead of watching the whole show. So every every week now we're just going to be uploading the video, but also yeah. uploading in segments as well. So we get to just click on see what we what we could do. Like I sent the. How we plan for damn night? Just send that on the group. It was really funny. That was really good. 
Yeah, so just like, things like that. It's good to like. I mean, the audio was good on that as well because you no know, one used playing guitar, so the audio was really bad. But do you yeah. know what I did? Do you know what I did? I got the. I basically edited it a bit. I got the original uh, video that I made, just and then up. I put and I put the one that we watched. So then I cropped our videos, and so we could see the reaction of everyone, and played the original audio, so that everyone could hear. That's really good. That's really good. That was good. Yeah. That's just learning the video editing world now. Well, yeah. inshallah, I want to do before we start. Um, hope you're doing well. Wa alaikum salam. I'm alhamdulillah. Actually, before before I start, Zareeb, I want to show you something. Okay. Uh, might, might embarrass you a bit here. One second. Just give me a sec. This is going to download. Um, while it, while, while it downloads, can I give you some good news and bad news? Uh -oh. There's always good news and bad news. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I don't like the bad news, man. So the good, uh, uh, I don't know what to start with. Uh, the good news is I've got the newest, nice new Kahoot ready. The okay. bad news, the bad news is that my dear brother An Anas will be hosting again only because, because my laptop it has not been used for many months, so I don't even look at it. So, and my work laptop is now uh, they've encrypted it now, so that's why Zoom doesn't work on it. So I need to get my old one out, man. A bit, uh, but the Kahoot's ready to go, though. So, <laughs> are you gonna do it? Or are you gonna lose that? No, no. So Anas will be doing it, and uh, I will. It'll be like last week. I haven't even asked him yet. To be fair, <laughs> but, but I know he's done <laughs> we were looking forward to doing it as well this week. Huh? Oh, very hard, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I've got, I got nice questions, but it's just the hosting part of it. Okay. We'll see about the questions as well later. Okay. Guys, did you know this cool thing? If you go to uh, the video icon, you click the up arrow, you can choose, yeah. you can choose a virtual background. But I don't have any. You can add them. Yeah. So basically, if you're ever in a situation where you like, uh, like you don't want to, yeah, that's it, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yeah, you can't see me. Yeah, so you can just choose that if you're in an embarrassing background place, you can just choose that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Get <laughs> camera flight. That looks nice, Nas. Does it look nice? Yeah, man. Looks like the green screen you have. Yeah, do you see um was it is he is it Guide Sub Central um affairs? Did you see him when he came on last week? He came on for like like probably about a minute and behind him he had the Ahmadid flag behind him. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw it for a bit and he's left. The Fudam one, the Fudam logo, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was in a meeting with Faruqi Saab yesterday. And like, you know, when you're moving a bit, it shows that there's something behind you. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is that background? Because he had like raindrops behind him. <laughs> so I was like, what is going on here? And then someone told me that you can change your background to a virtual background. Yes, Just... what are you saying? <laughs> I'm the... Could you not hear me? I said salam before. But I don't think my things were in. My, um... Yes, so doctor. Hamza, you got a haircut and a beard cut. No, I didn't get my haircut, I got a beard cut. Nice, nice. Do you guys welcome, guys? Everyone, thank you for joining again. Um last week uh, we had a nice program, a little bit shorter because we started a bit late. But today, um oh yeah, I was gonna show you I was gonna embarrass the Riyab a bit. Yes, Z. <laughs> Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. I just came across this picture. Mighty. And it's really nice that we're going to be able to be. Where is it, man? Can you guys see this? Yeah, yeah. Can you see this picture? Is, all yeah. the, is it Amdi answers? No, oh no, it's not. Oh, I can't show it, man. <laughs> Zero, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> uh, as far as I saw Zariyal's picture on the Atfal Amla. Actually, you don't. No, unless you should know about this. It's quite nice, actually. 
And this is the one that asked me for it. And that's the only <laughs> decent one I had. The other ones, I look like a Birmingham champ. So. <laughs> like also, the guy. This tie looks really good in it, though. The triangle, the samosa shaped tie is brilliant, though. <laughs> samosa shaped tie. <laughs> uh, I, I envy that. Can't lie. Okay, I just wanted to quickly play. I want to play something before we start. Um, so there's this guy. I don't know how many answers. Uh, everyone knows how many answers, right? So yeah. He, he made a really good video. I wanted to, sh to show a bit of it. Uh, one of my favorite bits, actually. And uh, he basically um, talks about um, uh, one of the guys that, who's a convert. And he's a, he's a good friend of mine as well. Every day I meet him. And uh, I always do I always do duty in Jamia, and I, I, I clean toilets for the past eight years before leaving Jamia. Uh, it was a really humbling job actually in hygiene. Uh, a lot of the middling guys, you guys every year in Jessa, you always do that job as well. Before I think you moved to to doing car park duty, but I remember every year you guys in in Islamabad, especially you guys used to come and do hygiene there. Which was really nice uh, to do, but in in Islam in Jamia, these guys, these converts, would always come and stay. So we'd always like spend every day, all night, talking to them and getting to know um, getting to know their story. So I just wanted to play a bit of that before we before we start, and then just talk about it a bit. I think it's really humbling for us to know um, how people change and where they come from. So with this guy, basically, I'm, I'm playing a bit towards the end, but uh, with him, he's born a Christian. He was, he's like every other guy, like you, he went away from religion for a long time, he became very hard-hearted, then he found Islam, um, eventually leading him to Ahmadiyyad. And then there's like a full circle of um, realizing that his actual neighbor was Ahmadiyyad his whole time. Um, and after 20, 20 or so years, he reunites with that person after becoming Ahmadiyyad. And, you know, it's, it's a really, really beautiful story. So I'm just going to play that. I don't know if uh, you guys can hear it. Can you guys hear this? Is audio okay? Or is it too low? One second. Um, Rabbi Sab is not coming out at the moment. The audio. The audio. One second. I think there's a way. What about now? Is it coming now? Not really. It's just like a bit faded away now it's pretty much totally gone that's good no is it working now no not really no <laughs> okay <wait. laughs> it's always a pain Let me try one more time. Literally, I pray Allah has answered three yeah. things for me. He yes. doesn't have to answer anymore. <laughs> for real, like, there, we're, he answered my first sincere prayer of showing me a sign so I can, you know, give up what I was doing. Then he answered the prayer of forgiving the man who sold my mother drugs and my mother. And then he reunited me with my best friend that I that growing up. I mean, th again, this is the side of the promise Messiah. This is the truth of the promise Messiah. You know, and but the funny thing is, is I always, every now and then I make fun of my uncle. You know, I was telling him, I said, man, why weren't y'all doing Tablin, man? <laughs> where was the Tablin again? Where, where, where were the flyers? Where were the barbecues, man? Where were the blood drives? I said, you would have preached to me at 10 years old, man. I would have accepted. I was looking for this. I've been looking for this. I was like, you made me live a hard life for ni another 19 years. But, you know, Allah, it was Allah's will, of course, you know, and we just joke about it. Uh, but, you know, the Promise of Messiah says you can't you know, have strong roots unless there's manure. Um, you know, so I had to go through that journey to get to where I am at, the, at this moment. Wow, an amazing, uh, inspiring story. Me and you are great friends, but the first time I've actually heard your story in such detail, so Alhamdulillah, uh, really inspiring. That's about it. Uh, Hamza, I know you saw that video. I didn't you watch the whole thing. Gee, boy. How did you feel when you when you watched it? Because, like, uh, I know we were, we were talking about it before, innit? So um, 
I think obviously his whole story, he also mentions about, I think, he met, I don't know if anyone else has watched it, but he mentioned about how his, um, his mother actually, um, she used to take drugs and um, he actually met the drug dealer who sold drugs to his mother in, um, in one of these meetings in the Jamaat and he actually converted to Ahmadiyya as well. And um, just to think, he was just talking about the profound effect it had on him as well. And his mother actually saw a photo of that drug dealer um, before and after he converted and his mother described that drug dealer as like the devil before and now he looks like an angel so it was just it was just crazy to see like the blessings of Jamaat yeah. and the fact that he managed to forgive that person as well imagine if we if we yeah. think of someone selling drugs to our mom like destroying her life yeah. and that to forgive such a person only only Jamaat can do that really you know you won't find that any that sort of forgiveness anywhere else yeah. I think even you mentioning about when he was doing bad the first time Mm. A man who he was hold his sh- putting his hand on the shoulder was this guy who sold drugs to his mum. Mm. So like crazy, it's crazy to think. Even to that level, you know, and he was hugging him and crying with him. Yeah, uh, found out that you know he was that person. So like only, like you said, there's only the Jamaat that you, that can change you into that person and uh, make you forgive people like that. Mm. And that's the thing you you saw as well, it. Yeah, yeah, I did. It's quite good. Uh, I watched it a couple of days back, and it is. Uh, he's talking about how, like, um, I think he's saying he got invited to one of the Ishmaels with Tulsa, and uh, and how he was like one of those new converts. You know, they go to that special tent, and how like everyone was greeting him with so much love and and like hugs, and you know, he was saying it was as if like these these guys are my proper brothers, and I guess it was that unity thing that he talked about as well, like how everyone's like you know, like it's like a brotherhood. Yeah, I remember he's, he was saying uh, when he went to Jalsa for the first time, he was watching Azhar Hanif Sab, Murabi Sab, uh, yeah. Yeah. and he was like, what is this, man? <laughs> it's like Malcolm X. For <laughs> <laughs> all these African-Americans, you know, Malcolm X was a huge uh, uh, the role model for them to, to come into Islam, and Ahmed Yet as well. So like uh, for him, like we don't realize how everything is just right, everything is just correct in what we do in our life. Um, when people hear about these things, you know, when he was saying about like, um, when he heard about um, Jesus Islam, not dying on the cross, he was like, what? How, is this guy, how is this guy saying this so, how is Ahmed saying this so confidently and so boldly that Jesus didn't die on the cross, you know, and that really answered a lot of his, a lot of his questions. So like, Alhamdulillah, um, we know the truth, um, Alhamdulillah, we know what is right. And everything we do, Alhamdulillah, in our life is, is right because as a Muslim, what Islam Islam taught us. I think, but a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people know what is what is not right. But they don't know the truth. So it's really important for us as well. Uh, so it's good leading up to his side as well. It's, it's important for us to um, understand the other side as well, and understand uh, other people what they what they allege against us, what they say about us. So just to increase our faith again. But alhamdulillah, we we have to be very grateful. And uh, you know these these new Ahmadis, you know they excel very quickly when they accept Ahmadiyya. They just wanted keep on excelling. He was saying like, I've read hundreds, hundreds of Jamaat books after becoming an Ahmadi and just in the space of a year or two. So with us, like, you know, we spend our whole lives. Uh, how many, how many of these things do we do? So we have to really try and, and become the best Ahmadis that we can and, and be amongst like the people in the first row as the Quran speaks about. So that was about it. Uh, Mubarak Sab, quickly, can we go over, over the Khutbah Juma today? <laughs> آج کا جو خطبہ تھا حضور کا وہ صحابہ کے بارے میں تھا دی ایکسلینس آف صحابہ کہ حضرت عمار حضرت صحیب حضرت سعد رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے بارے میں تھا کہ کس طریقے سے انہوں نے مطلب جان کی بازی لگائی کس طریقے سے وہ لوگ حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے آگے پیچھے دائیں بائیں لڑا کرتے تھے اور اس کے علاوہ انہوں نے جو حضرت صحیب جو تھے وہ نہایت سرخ ریڈ مطلب جو ہوتے ہیں وہ تھے اور اس کے علاوہ ان کی تھوڑی لکنت تھی زبان کے اندر سو ہی کین ناٹ اسپیک پراپرلی بٹ وہ ایسے تھے کہ ان مطلب بہادر بھی اتنے ہی تھے ہی واز بریو انف ایز ویل اینڈ وہ اس کے لیے حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے لیے وہ اتنی ہی عزت اور غیرت رکھتے تھے اسلام کی اتنی ہی غیرت رکھتے تھے تو جہاں تک میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ حضور کا بار بار صحابہ کی طرف اور ان کی قربانیوں کی طرف ذکر کرنا سیکریفائسز تو مجھے اس سے یہی پتا چلتا ہے کہ جو میں مطلب اس سے میننگس نکالتا ہوں کہ ہمیں بھی خلافت سے جو ہے اس وقت 
تو ہم نبی کا نائب جو ہے وہ خلیفہ ہے تو خلیفہ ہمیں انڈائریکٹلی یہی بتانا چاہتا ہے کہ وہی غیرت اسلام کے لیے وہی غیرت خلافت کے لیے اور وہی جان کی بازی لگانا مال وقت عزت سب آ جاتا ہے اس میں تو ہمارے ایمان کو مضبوط کرنا خلیفہ وقت از اے سورس آف موٹیویشن فار اس ایز ویل تو وہ جب کچھ فرماتے ہیں کچھ کہتے ہیں تو اس کا مطلب لازمی یہی ہوتا ہے کہ بی اٹیچ ود لائک اسٹے کنیکٹیڈ ود خلافت اور اسلام اس کے علاوہ حضور نے لاسٹ میں جو آج کل کرنٹ سچویشن چل رہی ہے اس کے بارے میں بتایا اور مینلی دی ریسزم وچ از گوئنگ آن ان امیرکا اس کے بارے میں بتایا کہ یہ اپنے حق تو لیں اگر جو افریقن امیرکن ہیں دے کین فائٹ فار دیئر رائٹس بٹ دیٹس ناٹ گڈ ٹو ڈیمیج دیئر پراپرٹیز اور پروٹیسٹ ان اے رائٹ وے بی ریسپانسبل سٹیزن اور اس کے علاوہ یہ تھا کہ جیسے حضرت بلال کا ہے کہ حضرت بلال بھی اس وقت مطلب میں جو سوچتا ہوں کہ ہی واز لائک این افریقن صحابہ اینڈ ہی واز ون آف دا موسٹ لوویبل فرام دا ہولی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تو ہم تو بیسیکلی جماعت میں تو ایسا ہے ہی نہیں لیکن حضور نے دنیا کو بھی یہی بتایا کہ اپنے رائٹس کے لیے لڑو لیکن ایک سیدھے راستے پر چل کے لڑو اور اپنے رائٹس لو جائز طریقے سے لو اور اپنی 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 چیزوں کو برباد نہ کرو تو یہ حضور نے کچھ ایکسلینس اینڈ سیکریفائز آف صحابہ پلس ریسزم وچ از گوئنگ آن یو ایس اے اس پہ پورا خطبہ تھا دیٹس آئی سم رائز فار یو was really good and it's really good for Zul to you know sometimes address a current situation because it's not always done uh, but Zul felt the need to do it because I think a lot of Ahmadis now are you know, also standing up and also wanting to take part and a lot of people have asked can we take part in these protests but um, the main thing is that you know people ask can we take part in pe- peaceful protests but the thing is right when you're when you're in a group of people You don't know if the guy next to you is a criminal, if he's a thug, if he's got different ulterior motives. So what you what your intention was to do a peaceful um, a peaceful march ends up being in something which is completely the opposite. I mean, people took that took that to their advantage and now you can see on TV how people are looting shops, you know, they're breaking into into stores and stealing things. Um because everyone's frustrated and they're getting their frustration out of that. But Zoom made a very interesting point. Uh, he said if you look at the jamaat we have made the most progress since the persecution has started and he said that because our mannerism about how we how we reacted to the persecution allah actually used that uh, for us to excel more and for the jamaat to grow more and so that's uh, what huzur's message was to people you know is this is what we should be doing in this way but he understands people's emotions as well so he didn't say don't don't uh, raise your voice he did say that but do it in a peaceful way so yeah that's that's basically what it was about do you guys have anything to talk to say about what's going on right now um in terms of um, the racism that's been going on anyone and asab you very opinion opinionated am i wrong asab i'm not sure uh As far as the racism is concerned, I think uh, it's not as clear cut as everyone seems to be making it, unfortunately. Um, and I personally think, I, as, as Zul said, that we should be protesting now, everyone should be protesting for their rights. But I don't think a lot is achieved by damaging and uh, burning your own city to the ground, in a sense. Because after two, three weeks, when everyone sort of calmed down and the news has moved on as well and Twitter feeds have changed, people are going to be relying on these services this police department the hospitals which they are literally burning down mm. and you just need to sort of pick and choose your battles and yeah sort of achieve your goal in a better way than just looting and hurting and mm-hmm. damaging the whole cause in a sense so do, what do you think about um, like the police and their reaction to to everything i think there should be zero uh, tolerance for any sort of racism from police departments and i think those people who did kill uh, the police officers who did murder uh, George Floyd I think they should be made examples out of and uh, so everyone every police officer should think twice before they decide to use brutal force against anyone I think they're here to serve and protect not to hurt anyone and kill what do you think man um I think basically um I, I think we was in a um you know in the last I'll just refer back to 
was in the bleak uh, discussion that was a few days ago, and um, we were talking about just briefly about jihad. And I mean, it kind of refers a bit about if you think about it, it's kind of like they're 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 thinking obviously this is their kind of jihad. This is their kind of their, you know, them protecting their, um, you know, their race and their background and so on. But then, you know, Murabi Saab, uh, Salbi Saab mentioned that, um, you know, that when, um, for example, the incident he mentioned a few incidents that when uh, Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he he was attacked by you know the um, the non-Muslims at that time, he decided to move to a different city, Mecca, which was uh, uh, Medina. And, uh, you know, and basically if you, if you, you know, if you, and then uh, also then the, um, the, you know, the attacks which happen in Pakistan as well at the moment, are we kind of, you know, the attacks which are happening to Ahmadis day in and out, are we really kind of, you know, reflecting back and attacking these people violently with that reaction so we're not you know we're just we're taking a different approach to i mean like there's different ways that you can uh you know you can respond to it you don't you don't don't really have to do exactly what these people are kind of showing this all kind of you know physicalness and all of that so i think uh there's different approaches that could be ways that you know you could be dealt with so but this approach obviously which is at the current situation is you know it's just it's more physical it's just to kind of maybe for some people the very limited people to kind of get their you know word heard but the way they're trying to get their word heard it's it's just making them look even bad so it's not really impacting on what they're actually trying to get through i think it's just i think it's weaknesses on both sides especially these are being forced to be in a position where they have to where they're being they think they have to use physical um, <clears throat> physical conduct, but at the same time, the protesters as well. You know, they're not doing things in the best way, and um, the way they're conducting themselves isn't what um, you know. Especially Islam, on Islamic point of view, it's not what we teach. And it's never seen in history that we've ever done anything like that. Um, so that that again is uh, a point to just to just note. So inshallah, I just pray you know pray for these leaders. You know that Allah uh, guides them as well. To make the right decisions and you know our rights are established um, that's inshallah inshallah we'll be able to live in a more peaceful world but the way it's going and from what Tazur has been saying you know um, it's, it's something which can be potentially very dangerous and it all it's all because you know people aren't listening to Azur, people aren't listening to his speeches and they're not taking note of what he's saying and whenever we go back we always realize that Azur has been saying these things again and again and again uh, repeatedly and that's the most uh, incredible thing. People think that, you know, uh, Azur hasn't spoken on this, but he keeps on saying uh, exactly. And he said this this very thing about um, a civil war happening, potentially happening, um, if the leaders don't make the right um, the right calls and the right decisions. So we were just talking about um, Freud being being uh, murdered and the, the, the reaction from the protesters and the the ruling and judgment from the government and the police. So that was a really good, it's a really good thing to discuss. And I think um, we need to, we need to also discuss it to see what the best way to do it as well. So if anyone gets the opportunity, if anyone has any friends, you know, just talk to them about it as well and just tell them their media point of view uh, because it's a really interesting study as well. Cool, man. Zaid, can we just quickly go through your thing before we yeah. go? Dika, just quickly uh, share the screen. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going, but guys, we're just going to quickly go through uh, the the bleak section. Yeah. And quickly, just quickly. So first, we're leading on to your side quickly, and then we'll go to we'll go to the talk as well today. It's going to be really interesting, inshallah. Yeah. So today, um, I'm just going to talk about a few of the things that had happened in the last week, and a few things that are upcoming as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, how we can, um, you know, as our Qudams, how we can basically tackle them and how we can, you know, uh, work together to achieve them. So uh, the first one in the agenda is uh, the um, virtual Eid party. So um, I wanted to basically uh, give my feedback from last week's Friday's uh, virtual Eid party that happened. It was last um, Friday, 5.30 p.m. And straight away after, we just had a Qudam night as well. So I couldn't really summarize, um, you know, a, a great feedback at the time because 
obviously I needed uh, feedback from the people who attended and all the people who are, are part of, um, you know, helping to uh, organize this program. So Alhamdulillah, it was a very successful uh, program, which was holded. Um, it was a program which was holded by um, uh, ambassadors, the local community ambassadors. One of the ambassadors is Dobi Saab as well. And he decided that uh, Kudans, we should, you know, have a, we should get involved. And obviously we are the next, uh, inshallah, we are the next, you know, the Ansars and we're the next people who are going to be, inshallah, be leading uh, the Jamaat as well. So if we kind of, you know, do these initiatives and if we lead on these initiatives, you know, inshallah, in the future as well, you know, it's a, it's a great kind of platform for us to train and inshallah, uh, you know, when the time comes, we will be very good at doing this stuff. So when if we start at this time here, you know, our youth, inshallah, by, you know, learning and developing, we would get to a, a much more better stage. So uh, the feedback is that on the day at the time, we had about 120 viewers who joined us on YouTube at the time of uh, when this was happening. And we also had about, I think it was about 55 plus, between 55 plus to 60, somewhere around those figures, we had people who joined from Zoom. And uh, the feedback which was from the community ambassadors who was in, you know, organizing this event as well, part of the Khudam, obviously. Uh, they, uh, mind if I interrupt, uh, there were yeah. 186 views on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, basically 186 up till now. So I think it was 120 on the day. That that's uh, so basically on the day we had this many views. So really? it, it, okay. Yeah. So on the day, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, it was almost about 200 people who kind of um, you know uh, was watching live at the at the time, and uh, the feedback again from the community ambassadors who are uh, quite a lot of them they are um, non-Muslim, and uh, they 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 were really kind of into it to make this program very successful for us. You know, the program obviously, is, the title is Virtual Eid Party. So it's more specifically to us and, um, but they were very keen to make it, you know, interesting and to kind of get us basically involved with it. And it was a good opportunity for us to always, you know, interact with the other communities as well. And um, yeah, also want to mention that uh, when I was, I was in, I invited our uh, NIBE um, was it Naib Tarbiyat uh, and and he, he also mentioned that Sadr Saad Khudam al was also aware of this program which was being held so it was you know Alhamdulillah that, that shows, shows how you know how um, you know how good feedback you know we've had and even Sadr Saab has known that you know our region and our Khudam from our region they were a part of this program as well so it's, it's something very good you know I would say and it's, uh, it's something, you know, I would say that, you know, for us as MDs as well, we, we should be uh, more, you know, getting involved in, as, as we do, for example, the Khidmat Khalik activities we do, we show our, you know, our humanity and so on. And also when we are, when we get the chance to kind of represent ourselves to other communities, to external communities and external members, you know, this is our time to kind of, you know, really give a great example of who we actually are. And uh, just wanted to kind of, uh, on my right, you would see there's a uh, saying of the Prophet Messiah. So just quickly read that, it says, I shall call thy message to reach thy corners of the earth. So uh, the reason why I've put this quotation there is as well, is that, um, you know, as, as you would know, the living example in front of us is that Jamaat is pretty much in every single country in the world. It's in more than 200 countries over the world. And it's, uh, alhamdulillah, by a lot of, you know, a lot of um, work has been done through uh, MTA as well. MTA just recently, it has had launched two more channels, which uh, has also an announced on last um, Friday ceremony as well. So, you know, alhamdulillah, there's, there's so much which is going on. And, um, you know, I would urge like, you know, Qudams as well, when we do have activities like these as well, do get in board it's for your own benefit and it's what you you know for you to also uh, build up your own skills as well so go to the next one this is uh just briefly go over this one 
this is our uh, we had a campaign last week Sunday it was my jihad uh, it was a these days unfortunately sometimes uh, the campaigns they're just uh, they basically announced on the day so this campaign was announced on the day so there wasn't uh, enough time for me to kind of you know for myself also to be involved as well you know I was a bit busy on that day and um, unfortunately uh, I, you know uh, I couldn't really get involved myself that much but um, again, you know, these campaigns, um, you know, the, these are there for us to uh, basically get involved. These are set up for us to kind of do uh, the bleak as well, send the message of uh, Jamaat Islam as well. And uh, what this campaign was about was basically uh, tell the viewers, you know, the, the public at the time was that uh, love for the, you know, what is our jihad? So our jihad is that, you know, is our love for the creator, you know, our worship that we, uh, that we basically, our jihad should be that, you know, we, uh, we uh, love Alamiya, we worship and obedience to him uh, to protect Islam. And it's also for the betterment of the world as well, basically. So there, there's more as well to it as well. But these were some, this, jihad, uh, this uh, campaign was just to kind of send out that message at that time. Um, Another thing is that, you know, we don't know when the next campaign is going to happen. It could be, it could happen next, it could happen tomorrow, it could happen the day after. But it's very important that when these campaigns do happen, that if you do have a Twitter account, you know, do get involved, please. And if you don't have a Twitter account, it's very simple to open. And uh, the, the Twitter is something that, you know, at the moment, uh, we are using uh, very, you know, productively for, the league purposes as well at the moment so we're not able to do uh, physical the league whereas we're not able to go and give a leaflet in someone's hand or knock on a door or stand on a high street so at the moment we're using social media a lot to kind of spread the message and alhamdulillah it's working very well the last few campaigns that we've had this kind of there's been a lot of campaigns and pretty much every single week you know there's been a campaign so i'm sure there is going to be more campaigns which are going to come ahead and you know these are there for us to kind of get involved and for us to basically you know improve ourselves as well and by getting involved in these campaigns as well i would say that you know when you read some of the messages as well it's knowledge to yourself as well some of the quotations and so on as well so this is a part of training as well uh, just finally about uh the league training and other trainings which are available to you guys so on on my left here, as you see on the screen, we've got the Bleak Talks. This is a program uh, which has been organized by the national team. And uh, they are planning to do this program, alhamdulillah, for... It's going to be a 10 days uh, program, which is going to happen every, I think, Sunday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. So it's going to cover uh, basically uh, non uh basically how to preach to non ahmadi Muslims, how to preach to Christians and how to preach to uh, atheism. So uh, it's, it's going to be a very good, inshallah, you know, program of good knowledge from uh, Nassim uh, Bajwa Saab, who is a, mi a missionary for uh, Bethel Fatur Mosque. So I've been in one of his also, you know, in his programs where where he's he's been given a bit of, you know, uh, tips on how for us to kind of reply and also get involved in the bleak activities. And uh, one thing I would mention is that I would also send the link in a minute as well. He would, I'm sure he will definitely be talking about the Tablig guidebook, which he has uh, written. And this Tablig guidebook is, 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 is literally like gold. It has, it has a lot of, you know, inf great information of how to kind of approach and gives you good information how to do Tablig as well. So I would send the link in a minute as well. This is a very, inshallah, is a very successful program which will be happening every Sunday from now on. And this is by the National Department. And on the right here, this is a program which uh, the Bleak Discussions, which we are holding from our region uh, with uh, the Midlands, the Bleak Department. And um, at, at the moment, uh, we're going to change this program to 7 p.m. So now this will be every Wednesday, 7 p.m. This And uh, it's by it's uh, been hosted by Tariq, uh, Tahir Salbi Saab, a missionary from uh, Hartlepool. So at, uh, our, we're going to, from next week, we're going to basically, our topic is going to be um, Holy Quran's response to science. So a lot of, uh, you know, our friends, uh, a lot of young friends we have, and 
the you know the society at the moment they're you know they're very into science and they don't really think religion is very important at the moment they they you know they would say science is everything and it's more just you know what's in front of us they want you know, they want straight answers but you know religion is more looked at now the thing as you know it's it's, it's more backwards it's not it's not it's not answering their questions but we know that's not the truth and uh inshallah we're going to start this from wednesday and inshallah it will be a very successful program as well and it'll be very educational so if if you you know kudams please do join in this and you'll get great knowledge and you know great tips of how to kind of respond back to your friends and you know what answers or what you can ask them or what questions how you can respond to them their answers as well so that's all from me from outreach department jazakallah rabbi sahib jazakallah everyone for listening out as well it's good to hear what you learned as well so that's always good to um, can you? Uh, we're just going to go to the the main main talk now. Mubarak uh, Sab, Mubarak Sab, as you know, I someone who came out out of the out of the shadows for me um, while I was while I was uh, in Midlands. So obviously, I was still getting to know people. But while we did our khutbah, um, uh, I was introduced to him by by Kaitab. So uh, since then, Alhamdulillah, he's been with us every every khutbah. Like you know, he was traveling all the way from Birmingham north with his team and every week he was coming so now alhamdulillah he's part of the team as well and as you know every week he's always delivering the friday sermon so today inshallah um, he's going to give us a little insight about himself and about his journey uh, coming from um, dubai um, working with us uh, and coming here to the uk and uh, all the jobs that he's been doing and so he works I'll let him t- obviously he will introduce better than me but uh, just from what he was telling me, it's really interesting uh, for someone to work in, you know, in, in technology and things that we need in our house uh, when we're using our phones, you know, we're using our Wi-Fi and internet. So any problems that you guys have been having, uh, any slow Wi-Fi, any, any, anything like that, just, uh, just throw the questions at him and inshallah he'll be able to answer it. And also if anyone's interested in going into that, that line of work or is interested in anything to do with that, you know, ask him and he can refer to as well. Uh, so I'm going to go with you, Zakla, for, for coming on today. Um, it would be interesting to you do as well, Zakla. We also have a presentation prepared as well. So just let me know when you want to share that. Okay, Russell, I think you need to go. Uh, you're on mute right now. <laughs> Vicky, put him off mute, please. Uh, who should I be putting him off mute? Mubaris, Mubaris. Where is he? Okay, there. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Unmute. I think we're a bit shy too. Murasab, <laughs> <laughs> Ajo, let's talk. <laughs> so, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, wow. this, is, this is Mubariz Ahmed. Um, actually, my journey, like, I was born in Karachi in Pakistan, and my journey started from there. And I did my higher education there in University of Karachi, and I have a specialization in marketing, branding, and advertisement. So, after doing that, I was just, I was just searching for a job. Then my colleague told my friends, actually my friends and family told me that you are good at um, like you are good at cooking. So go for it. And it's a in 2012, it's a fancy job. So I just go for that, and I did my diploma in food and production, and food and production and beverages, and then. I did that, or after that, I, after completion that, after completion of that course, uh, I was doing side by side. I was doing tablir as well. So in tablir, um, I was like a extremist Ahmadi. You can say that. So I did a lot of tablir at uh, Karachi Zilla level and all over. Like I was taking classes. Like I was like Zaysab. So, <laughs> so <that laughs> thing, like. Once there was a lot of like opposition from the like 
uh, other people. So there was extremist group. There was an extremist group which like warned me that you are not supposed to do these things if you want to live here. So I was like a bit of scared. Then I wrote a letter to Khalifa Wak that this is going like this thing. So he he replied that that he prayed for me. And after that one night, a group of people came at my house, the extremist or terrorist, I don't know. So they came at my house and they said that this is your last day. And tomorrow, like police or some people will arrest you from here. So at that night was the last night in Pakistan for me. And it was in the year of 2013. Now it's like seven years. So that was the last night and I was so scared as well and I was so worried about the family and all these things and I just moved from, I did a hijrat migration to Rawa and then I lived there like an underground for three months and I was applying on the same time in Dubai for a job. So luckily I got the job because of the barakat of blessings of Khilafat and I was writing letter to Huzur every day. So when I was I was writing the letter, so it was like my strong belief that if you are writing a letter, that will hundred percent. If you write the letter, if you haven't posted till, you, I have a belief that it will be accepted. So I just wrote a letter on a daily basis, and I luckily in three months I got a job from a multinational company, a smart card manufacturing company, debit credit card. They are manufacturing the Idemia. They are manufacturing basically a debit, credit cards, UK passport, personalization, um, Nadra in Pakistan, like national identity card uh, manufacturing. They are in IT solutions. So I got that job. That, that company was in like 40 countries of the world. So as you can see, if uh, you can show this presentation, if you can show that, Murabi sir, that presentation. Easy. Yeah, this was my academic year. The yeah. next, yeah, that was my internship in Pakistan after graduation as well. That Pakistan is, I, I was lucky that I got some of the like, not uh, many people can take or can be eligible for that Pakistan State Oil and National Company of Oil and Industry. So I was that lucky guy that I got an opportunity to have an internship program at Pakistan State Oil. Uh, next. What was, your, what was your degree in? What did you pass your degree in? I have done a specialization in Masters in Commerce and my majors are uh, Marketing, Branding and Advertisement. So after that, I, I, was in, I was in media as well. As you can see, I did some journalism things and uh, media work and radios and hosting uh, events. Or after that, I moved to Dubai for this, uh, working for this smart because because of this media things and everything, I got like uh, in the eyes of the extremist and terrorist that these guys like going to be a famous. So when when whoever is famous in Pakistan and he has a tag of Ahmadi, definitely you know what I mean. So after that, I was my house was looted as well, and I have that. Uh, you can see that I was. The other night, the last night they came and after that I ran away from there and in Rabwa and they looted my house, the extremists and terrorists, they have their like, they occupied my house. I have this, you can see guys, guys can you imagine that your home is being looted and you are, are nothing, you have no power to do this. This, hmm. this you can see here, I will show you one thing because my friends are also watching. This is my sales deed of my apartment. They are in Pakistan. And I have no authority to live there anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I still remember that my mother cooked food and watermelon was cut and everything was there. But we cannot like have the opportunity to eat that. We just left everything and ran from there. And then in Dubai, as you can see, this is smart card manufacturing debit credit card. I was working for that company um, because uh, I want to, sh I want to tell some, I want to tell you something interesting about this smart card manufacturing things. It's a different level, next level thing. Like you are doing in smart card manufacturing. We know that debit and credit card, whatever in your pocket is, whatever card is in your pocket is manufactured by us. So it can be like 
we have a lot of varieties of card like we are di imposing diamonds in the card so we are imposing diamonds and we have like some reflective card crystal cards like metal cards um and some fragrance card and reflected which reflect in night and fragrance with chocolate and strawberry so it, and um, the diamond card we are issuing to the billionaires of arab so mm -hmm. once i remember that a sheikh of arab like mohammed bin rashid he came to uh, uh, collect his card from our manufacturing plant so uh, yeah so after that we have in in this smart card manufacturing we have schemes we called it schemes in technical terms mastercard uh, visa card paypal and paypark these are the schemes next uh, these are um, these are the type like contact contactless hybrid and dual interface that nfc card like a contactless card and contact are like you insert into the machine and then the withdrawal of money in atm we use contact card and contactless for the nfc tap and go next um these are the like we are working on that and it's really a confidential work we were doing and it's a lot of headache because they the banks are sending the banks were sending us the artwork like a selfie card like rabbi sir took a picture and he want his uh, picture on the card so we have to manufacture that and some artwork like a 500 million card i remember a word situation of our company uh, qatar bank of qatar bank of qatar ordered 100 million cards and their artwork have some um, uh, like you can say that there was a mistake in the in the artwork and we like we issued all 100000 cards 100000 card yeah 100k card and these all we shredded after that so it's a so confidential and so complicated work to do and lot of with a lot of stress so after this dubai uh, can you, uh, i came a uh, uk i got married in uk and then um i was searching for a job i i came uk in like uh, 2018 august 2018 so here i was searching for a job and in dubai uh, the main thing which i want to tell you guys as well that your resume present yourself how to sell in how to sell yourself into the market it all depends on your resume so in in dubai uh, we had a lot of uh, workshops regarding focusing mainly on resume because uh, you don't know in dubai is dubai economy is like a balloon you don't know when it will blast so you have you always have to be ready every day that you're going you are going to lose your job and you have to apply for another job so with that resume and uh, once i moved here uh, as usual i wrote uh, khalifa work that i moved here i got married and um, i'm searching for a job now uh, by the grace of allah i am like protected with, with um, i protected from all evils and i reached uk so uh, so the khalifa work like um again prayed for me and uh, luckily i am the person that i always uh, get the reply from khalifa work i always receive the uh, letters from khalifa work so i got the next day uh, i got the job here in enjoy enjoy like it's our birmingham market so what we are actually doing for enjoy um, our partners in the next slide is um, samsung uh, Huawei British Telecommunication who is merged with EE now so BT and EE are under the same banner and then Google product like Google Pixel or Sonos music systems and iPhone uh, you, you know that uh, so in these uh, what I am doing actually I am doing like a field expert and a back-end work in, in the technical department if a customer like what is the difference like we our company is like an Amazon company. Our CEO is the one who who designed Apple App Store for Steve Jobs. He used to work with that guy, Steve Jobs, and he gave this idea at that time that you should have a App Store in your mobile. So that guy now six years back, in, it's basically a US company. So six years back, he came with the idea. is very unique idea that if customer you are you are delivering a phone to a customer, you are delivering any technical product to a customer. And once I I'm I'm zero technical guy, so if I am receiving that Sonos Music System or a Google Pixel, so I that's a delivery thing. That's Amazon what Amazon is doing. Next day delivery, they're delivering you. So we are going an extra mile. We are delivering as well as we are setting up for a customer as well. Like Amazon is to the door, 
and we are through the door and we are sitting with the customer. We had a we we, we are having a cus, uh, meetings with the customer and if like old senior citizens and and a young generation as well, a lot of people like they are saying that we don't know how to transfer the data and how to do like British uh, routers and all these technical things and Wi-Fi extenders and these all things. So we are giving a technical details to them on phones and uh, and a lot of things like that. We are doing for iPhone. Uh, if customer is ordering an iPhone, so some of the people are like delivering that iPhone and we are giving uh, backend uh, solutions. If uh, iCloud is not working, Apple ID is not working. So we are partner with them. So we are communicating with us. Uh, on the same time, we are communicating. We are like a bridge communicating with iPhone and uh, same time with the customer and customer. So this transfer of data thing and um, if customer want to know, it's a sales perspective as well, but we are not in that sales thing. So our job is like, you can say that people say that your job is like a fancy job. You have nothing to do. You have to just tell us that my, my ID is not working. So how to, how can I do it? My data transfer is not transferring the data. How can I copy my data from my old mobile? So these things and for BT British telecommunication are like our main headquarter for internet. So for internet thing, we are doing uh, Wi-Fi disk um, extenders, Wi-Fi boosters are Wi-Fi disk, and then we uh, now it's re the logo has been changed. They are redesigning the logo because when we once when we talk about BT, when we take the name of BT, it comes in my mind like senior citizens, old people. Now they are redesigning their logos and their themes, so they can be indulged into the young market because young youngsters like we are playing PUBG and all these things, all, all having uh, Virgin Media. So till now, this is the thing. And after that coming a uh, main hurdle, main challenge, we, what I faced here in UK, Hamza, Na Nasir, you know guys, and mainly Zaisa, I was discussing with Zaisa as well, that here the accent of Br British, mainly the Birmingham is quite quite difficult for me to understand i mean like if a, i was working for like two three months in a um, takeaway and customer asked me he was like in a hurry and he was asking me that can you give me a bottle of water i was saying what the <laughs> you're talking about what is this i was saying i was saying to that gora tu mar jayega main tujhe pani na de paunga aise bol de nahi i i couldn't be able i that was my first month in uk and he was saying, no T pronunciation, no R pronunciation. What is this? I was watching movies in English. They, they are pronouncing everything. So that's the main difficulty which I was facing. And after that, I was just assuming the word. Uh, I was just putting uh, imagination. I was putting T and R in every word. And I, I'm catching that word. So <laughs> after that, now what I am doing with Enjoy, I'm working with Enjoy as a field expert and plus I'm doing a radio station for the last two months, Radio Canada, Radio Saskatchewan. Um, as my brother is living in Canada and he is like hosting for two days, he's working there in radio and he's doing two shows in a week. So one show he has dedicated to us for UK site. So that I am hosting and basically our idea is like um, in Masroor Cup, this this year Masroor Cup like we are missing Masroor Cup a lot mm. uh, due to COVID and all these things it, it didn't happen so we are we, we have introduced in class two months in eight nine shows we have introduced a lot of uh, new talent and uh, the guys who has done a tremendous job like in national under 19 or higher level or people from Jamaat who is who, who are representing their countries for cricket and we are inviting them and the people who are legendary cricketer uh, in Jamaat. Uh, so we are inviting them as well. So our next next is like um, we are designing a show for same like a European league for football as well. And we will invite, I know that um, our regional guys is playing and from London all over the world. We are inviting people from all over the world, whoever has the potential and who has done a uh, like excellent job in their respective fields so we are inviting them as well so this is what my journey uh till 2020 so yeah that was really really interesting and i just have a few questions for you just before we go to everyone else who have their questions more technical questions i hope um just uh, your journey was amazing like i didn't know that i didn't know that 
that you felt you you experienced persecution in your own in your own house, which caused you to flee, um, which was the same like uh, with, uh, with the Khulafa of our Jamaat. Uh, and to come to the UK eventually. Uh, but how did that, that experience, um, how did that affect you? Does it still affect you now? Do you still think about it? And does it make you a better person? Do you feel closer to, to Khulafat and Allah because of it? Actually, my name uh, was kept by um, uh, Khalifa al-Masih Rabi Rahmahullah Ta'ala. And my name meaning is to share difficulties with courage. Yeah. And that's the hikmah that Khalifa worked kept my name on that thing. So that means I have to face these difficulties. And your name meanings represent your personality. So now when I was in like uh, in a great torture. It was like immense pressure and torture when you have nothing you there is nothing to lose. You have lost everything. Your family, your friends, your land, your motherland, your house. You have an empty pocket on the road. And that road is not belong to you as well. And you are kicked out from the country and you are compelled to leave your country mm -hmm. and go to the other country uh, with the 50 Celsius and 60 Celsius. And you have to work there. You have to live alone there. Mm -hmm. Because my family was in like, they migrated to Canada. They are in Canada and they are watching this show as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I was alone for five years, half decade. I, I, like, I, I lived in Dubai. No one there. I was, uh, for Jamaati purpose, yes, I was working. That make me so strong, like living alone, that you're, if you are a self-made person and you're living alone, that make your personality more solid. Work, I think so. And uh, I was working like in Dubai for regional um, Theta Jismani. So mm. the, there as well, uh, my, my support was, I, I left Pakistan for Jamaat and I was received by Jamaat in Dubai. And the Jamaat everywhere, wherever you will go, it's, it's a family. So that make me, your, your answer of that question is that make me more strong and more positive towards the life and achieving the goal, how short the life is, we don't know the next breath. But yes, we, that's why I was, I am in always in a hurry to do a lot of things for Jamaat because this is the blessing of uh, our community. That Khalifa works is here and he's always praying right here. He's praying for us. Yeah. yeah well, it's really, really inspiring. And just like you mentioned about your name, your name also means uh, Mubariz is someone who stands on the front line. Um, and this is what they would call people when they would fight during the time of the One more thing, um, Rabitha, addition to my name, uh, Khalifa uh, Masih Rabi Rahmahullah wrote a Nazim in which he mentioned this name as well. Koi mubariz ho to nikle, koi mubariz ho to nikle, saamne koi mubahil aaye. Himmat kiski thi ke nikalta, kiski himmat thi ke mardhe haq ke mukabil aaye. Something like that. So yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful. Exactly. So, from there we've talked about your journey, we've talked about um, you know, your experience with the persecution and how you went into your job and you got your degree alhamdulillah and now you're working with a company called Enjoy. It's something we should <laughs> try to also do enjoy our life you know enjoy our work um, but at the same time you know um, we should always remember what the jamaat has given us and always for anything and it seems like um, you're almost going through a journey which i hope and pray it's like the holy prophet وسلم, he was forced out of his home the place he was born um, and he went to medina you know and eventually he came back so we pray that you know for all those people who have been um, persecuted and left pakistan would inshallah one day be able to go back and be able to say, you know, I've come back home. Um, and they are your homes. They, they, those are your roads which you which you walked on when you were young. And inshallah one day you'll be able to go back and um, go back as a free Ahmadi to be able to live your faith as well. So I just want to go to everyone. Uh, does anyone have any questions, uh, whether it's regarding uh, more about, you know, what he went through or, <laughs> or if you have any slow Wi-Fi? <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I got a question. Um, my, my question is: So, when you left Karachi to Rabba, where were you? What, where were your family? What did your parents do? Did they? What was? Where are your parents right now? Did they come with you? You know, what happened with them? Yeah. So, um, actually, my my grandma was living in USA, 
and uh, my mother has a, um, a visa for USA. So she visited her in 2010. So what happened is like we all left from Rachi and moved to Rabwa and we took a house there on rent. So they were living there. Uh, my sister, my brother was already in, in 2009. He migrated. He was an immigrant. He migrated to Canada. So I have one sister, me and my mother and my father was there before person. So in Rabwa, we, we were living, we took a, a rented house and luckily I got the job in Dubai. I moved there and after that, my mother went to a USA uh, and from there she moved to Canada and did the asylum. And after that, you see how we split it and how we destroyed um, the, as a whole family that my mother and my brother is in Canada, me in Dubai, my sister with my father was living in Rabwa for a good two years. And um, my sister was in college at that time. So yeah, at that time and at that age, so my, my sister and my father was living in Rabwa for two years. And then, yeah, my mother asyl did asylum in Canada and I was in Dubai. So this is how, and after that, she got the visa, my sister and my father got the visa after two years for Canada and they migrated there. So my whole family was there and I was working in Dubai. It's a good, after that, I was feeling good that uh, at least my family is in, at one place and they are in a safer zone now. So yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Zakala. Yes, any questions? Wi-Fi questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got a question for you, Murabi Saab. Yeah, go for it. If say if Pakistan uh, say okay, MDs are allowed. We love MDs now, and everything's back to normal. Would you move back? And do you think Khilafat would move back? I don't know if I'd move back because I'm not from there. <laughs> <laughs> you miss Warsaw too much. Where are you from? I'm from uh, I'm from uh, Mauritius. No, you're not. No, you're Mauritius. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> you're Mauritius. <laughs> no, what do you mean, bro? So you've never been Pakistani? <laughs> I, think so. I don't have any. I don't have any relatives of Pakistani blood relatives. Anyway, Mashallah, that is sick, easy, exotic. <laughs> my grandma's from Ireland. My my grand great grandfather's from Afghanistan. My great grandmother's from France. And uh, I don't want to take the limelight off of uh, about this. It's his, it's his time, not my time. I'll do a talk on myself for later on. So, yeah, uh, one more thing. Um, my you. friend, uh, Zaita, for your interest as well. And first of all, I want to like um, give some comment regarding Nasir, uh, Hamza, and one more guy, Zaryab. That I, in my early age, uh, like I, I used to be the same as these guys, these three guys. Always stick with Murabi Saab and support Murabi Saab. When I used to live in Karachi, I, I just see these guys and I remember my time. So that's really a good thing. And I really appreciate these guys that they are truly working for Jamaat and really sincere for Jamaat. I really feel happy for them. Uh, and second thing that uh, for Zai Saab, uh, Ahmad Sheikh, I think, yes, Ahmad Sheikh, uh, he is my uh, dearest friend. He used yeah. to be my junior in uh, Karachi University. Yeah. He so we just lost you, Marisab, you're mute. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, I was saying that uh, Ahmed Sahab uh, is, has joined our conference as well. He is my junior in the University of Karachi. And um, he is not Ahmadi, uh, uh, but Sunni Muslim. So it's a great, it's a great honor for us that um, he's here as well. So he's basically living in Liverpool. So I requested him, which I always request him to join our at least for Dam night. So mm -hmm. because all youth are here, so he can uh, last two. I think last month, Hammer, I told him that I am Hamadi, but I haven't told him that I am Hamadi. I told him the scenario, what going on with me, but. What happened with me? 
so ahmed ahmed said me that are you are you kadiani hmm. so he just the pakistani people know that if if pakistani people if pakistani person told you that i have something to tell you or ask you that means he knew that i am md that's <laughs> it my friend my friend a lot of friends they have said that i have i have to discuss something with you i just think that okay now game over <laughs> i am kadiani i am export so oh. yeah <laughs> He's here. Sorry, sorry. Moment, for you, Kafir. Yeah. Um. Uh, I just request you, Rabi Sab, if uh, Ahmed Sab, if you can unmute Ahmed Sab, and Ahmed Sab can give some opinion about Jamaat and the community. How he find the community? We have a live example. Like he has his own history as well. So he is basically a Bihari, and his family was killed in 1971 in Dhaka Division, a Bangladesh Division. so he can felt uh, he can feel our like dard as well so i want to request him that he he can do if he can tell us something for our interest and how he found jamaat and um, this platform and how we are working what his what his impression that what is the khilafat what what they are doing a uh, yahudi lobby uh, in uh, uk so what he thinks about us Hello sir kum Ahmed sab zakla for for coming you always welcome um everyone as you know whoever you have friend any friends you have also they can come onto this platform this is for everyone it's just like we like to be together we like to connect together in the midlands and remember each other to because we're all brothers end of the day and you also are our brother so Ahmed sab if you want to say anything from your side uh, assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam oh. uh as as mubarak has already introduced me quite well uh yeah i've been uh, i've been listening to you guys as well right now in the conference call and mubarak invited me and i was excited because i am doing phd in uk i've started my higher education in pakistan uh where i was uh, working in uh isf which was in saf student federation uh, it was a student federation of pakistan tehreek and saf pti so but i was from karachi and at that time it was uh, the toughest time to be in isf because there was a biggest rival for us and them rivals are not there anymore as i always say makafat amal you pay what you, you saw what you reap and that's what they had to go through so the, I, I, my life has been threatened there when i was working and mubaris used to be my senior i remember when i started my you know, bachelor's in commerce in karachi university mubaris was doing his mcom so he was senior but i will always remember him he is one of the senior who never did the ragging <laughs> and always okay, always welcome us and uh, yeah that 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 thing is from the very beginning when when i have been seeing oppressor uh, communities all around the pakistan it's not just one community being a bihari i am a migrant immigrant and i am the third generation in pakistan but still we are called immigrant on papers oh. which kind of uh, hurt me when i was very young it affected me very badly because when we read the books right when we read the books when even we read the islamic books ansar and muhajirin used to be brothers muhajirin were meant to be very respectable because they had to migrate for the purpose of their religion their belief and they migrated with the holy prophet so they were when when we see the books when we read the books they are meant to be respected and welcomed by rest of the people but in reality it was completely the other way around you are not even heard your problems are not even heard right so you see these things right and you start realizing that how oppression causes troubles and not just for one for everybody and um, i was seeing this all through and then you know uh, when um, PTI government got into the position and I am from business background I have studied bachelor's business in Sunderland uni and then I did my MBA and now I'm doing my PhD in ethical development and political CSR uh, so political social responsibility as you can see these both subjects are quite related and I like to do research and uh, hear from uh, everybody i like to hear the story i like to understand and this is what i shared with mubaris when he was sharing his story first time i remember uh, we had a conversation about everything and then he was talking about something he shared details with me and um, 
and then he goes like uh, do you understand where i'm coming from and i straight away realized it and i goes like i literally understand where you coming from and i asked some critical questions to him which i can see and obviously you guys didn't ask maybe you guys already know these stories you have seen this all and i asked some stories which were like so what is the future you see for yourself mubaris okay not just you what do you see the future of your jamaat in pakistan see the majority is there and they are human being and they have got all the rights to do whatever they require to do right so i was asking this critical question and mubaris understood my point and uh, i still remember he goes like so bro will you not receive my call from tomorrow are we, are, are we not going to talk again i yeah. said if it had to be like this would we be the friends obviously not it is always better to hear the others and then make your own opinion what if holy prophet wasn't heard at the age of 40 when the revolution came on him what if the people of makka and at that time who didn't have the faith in allah because islam wasn't revealed at all what if he was rejected at completely mm. there will be no muslims we were not even there mm. 1400 years ago so hearing is the something which every muslim should be doing but uh, we see this not just uh, from muslim perspective if i look at the southeast asian perspective the problem with us uh, getting to the extent where we reject the other opinion without even hearing it completely you know what i mean so because um, i've got around around 40% of family is still live in bangladesh my maternal maternal side and um, around 30% of my family is still live in india as well and um, i look at the political circumstances on all around the southeast asia now since we have been living in england for so long we look at the uh, from the research perspective we look at the global economics perspective and policies if you look at indian policies right now about cab nrc we raise this issue we raise this issue we 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 hear the problem of muslims there and we we feel that it's been discriminatory um regulation tried to be implemented by bjp government in india we raised the voice all over the world and when this happened in our home we shut our eyes we shut our ear and that's where i find it very hypocrite and um, i feel the pain i would different when i said i feel the pain is like the pain of a struggle what mubari said to go through he's won is one individual how many other people had to go through you can't even talk about it why is that if you look at another um, another bloke is being really popular you know, on youtube and straight away the moment he been popular he became the controversy engineer mirzali when he started talking about uh, these all uh, sects which are taking religion to the extent where they do they spread the hatred for each other he he didn't have madrasa so he is not asking for fund he is not uh, uh, telling people not to go and believe their sect all he is saying is reading the quran reading the books quoting the, with the references and our in our home in our community people can't even take it because it's raising the question when for example if he says anything i'm not targeting any sect but what i'm trying to say if he finds something in barelvi maslak wrong according to quran but said by in the in their in their scholars book he he's been targeted he's been almost uh, mobilized by people he didn't even say they are wrong he just questioned as socrates questioned in greek world 2000 years ago when he questioned just he raised the question that i and he said when he was asked to give a narrative about the blasphemous law in greek 2000 years ago when there was no islam no christianity as well it was only moses i believe the and he was he was called blasphemous 2000 years ago in greek ancient world and he was given poison as a persecution he was given two 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 options as a as a persecution verdict by the by the penalty was either leave that city i don't remember that city i think it was i don't remember the exact name but either you leave this city and never come back leave this country or kill yourself we will give you the poison and socrates who i think 
I personally think he, in three years ago, he revolutionized my mind when I wrote, uh, when I read Socrates and understood that he stood for the truth. He accepted the poison to drink instead of uh, and he said at that time when his students asked Aristotle and Plato were asking him, please don't do it, sir. Hmm. Nobody wants their teacher to die in front of them and say, Amar, Why you doing it? leave the Amar, country. Yes. Amar, sorry. I have a question. Uh, when you are coming uh, to meet our Khalifa? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still stuck, but inshallah, I will. I will. I would love to. That's the because you, I know that on, I know that on weekends you were there. Uh, you used to be there, but I don't know after COVID what what will be the situation. But I hope so that we are going to meet uh, Khalifa work together. Like you and me will go there, and we will meet uh, Khalifa work uh, like shortly. Uh, Amar, we have uh, Zaid Saab with us. Zaid and Juha Saab. Uh, he is the head of like Birmingham. Tablik, uh, he's the head of Tablik, so I will give you his reference as well, and I his, I will share your reference to him as well. So sure, in future, sure, sure. hopefully, you will like you. Uh, we will have a like we will be like you can say that blessed that if you will share your opinion in our different platforms as well. We want you to be included in our different platform. I request Zaisab that if he can like uh, allow us or authorize uh, Amr Sheikh for the different platform for national for UK London and different so he can address to them and he can share his opinion yeah Jai cool. Zaid Saab that will be great thank you thank you so much Zaid Saab uh, as I can say I like to call them Janjua Saab thank you so much <laughs> and uh, thank <laughs> you for you guys as well I'm, I'm you know that how to call them. <laughs> no no I'm assuming Zaid Saab would be like to be called Janjua Saab he would <laughs> love it we, it's I know. fine. It's, it's fine either way. It's uh, you know, it's a surname, so it's fine. I was gonna say, um, it's it's very nice uh, for you to share your feedback, and uh, you know, very feedbacks nice. like that it oh, makes thanks us. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yes, Prabhupada. You know, it makes us feel uh, very proud that you know that there are other um, you know, people out there as well that they understand, you know, our uh, difficulties as well, and they also it's not just us as well in the world that uh, feel these hardships as well. There is uh, other peoples and other sects, and as you've mentioned as well, you know, in this, and um, as as I was saying as well before earlier on as well, we 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 just recently had our um, virtual uh, eat party where you know the whole program is decided to bring everyone together. So we're not when we're not we're not really limiting anyone. So we're not showing we're not just keeping anything to ourselves. Our jamaat is open to everyone. You know, anyone is welcome to come and see it and research and read the books and do your research properly. Take your time. We're not there to kind of, you know, basically kind of, uh, I don't know, like to uh, preach to, to you in that me. way, to push you in that way. You can see everything from your side. It's all in front of you. There's nothing to hide. You you are involved in this, uh, you know, conference with us as well. There's nothing for us to kind of hide everything there. We would first make sure that you have seen everything clearly and you've understood that is our approach you know our approach is not just there to you know to kind of convert anyone or anything like that that is not our approach or that's not our aim our aim is to win the heart basically that is our you know motive you know achievement at the end of the day so if that if that is that what we can achieve and you know and alhamdulillah your heart's very nice and it's very nice to you know gather your you know your feelings as well so this this is truly exactly what we want to be a part of so jazakallah for you know being in this show as well jazakallah to it's completely my pleasure and i'm really grateful of you guys as well that you accepted me and heard me as well and uh, it's definitely my opinion and to be very honest i'm uh, i'm a scholar i'm doing my phd i'm about to do start my research by the end of this year and um, uh, but as you guys are still aware when you have to be a scholar and if if i want to be a scholar for example how can I not think of Dr. Abdul Salam? How can I not think of oh, yeah. him? How can I not give the respect to his community, like not just his community, what he has done, as well as when he went to take the Nobel Peace Award, he wore our culture, he wore our identity to the world. He didn't go in a tuxedo to be a great Briton. He was in his kula and his sherwani. 
I don't remember after Jinnah who was there in the Sherwani and Kula representing his culture and his country, who was to protect. So they, being educationist throughout my life, nobody can take this away from my heart, the respect for the education, the invention and contribution to the community. That bro, look, uh, just last one thing I would like to add that when uh, PTI government came to place, I was really excited. And um, as I've worked for them quite long as well. But when, um, uh, I, forgive me, pardon me, I forgot his name, but I still follow him in Twitter and I read him. Um, Ajit they, Mia. Mia, Mia, Mia. Yeah, yeah, Mia sir. yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he was taken away, who's about to be, um, uh, according to analysis, by the time of 2022 or 2023, he is expected to be the candidate of Nobel Peace Prize Award for his contribution to the whole world as an economist. When we lost the opportunity as a nation to have this kind of asset to play the role, what was the team of Jinnah? When it comes to the truth, we, when nation closes their eye, become hypocrite. They don't find the way. There is no way. There is no. You, there is no vision. So from my from my end, this heart is always open for that end. Being an obviously, I've I've not grown up in your community. I've not heard a lot. What I've heard is from all the resources. But these were the things which I've heard from neutral resources, which nobody can disown, right? Even other people own it. They know what happened to Dr. Abdul Salam. Whenever I ask my mother, I tell who Dr. Abdul Salam is to her, her, my mother, my father, what their contributions are. Straight away, the respect level is right at the top. Like all they did is educate their kids. I had two, I had, we were three siblings, two sisters and me. But then when I tell them what happened to him, they just keep quiet, they're sad. They, my dad start calling the history of himself, losing 58 lives for the sake of arrogance of some dictators and uh, political party. We lost a whole country. We lost a whole, whole bloody country, as well as 58 people just from my family. And that was, that was 71. We are not even counting 47. When we when we lost a lot of lives for Islam and Pakistan, so yeah, definitely uh, the pain is the pain is mutual. The uh, and my I would be reading, I would be listening, I would be hearing, and if that that would be great if you guys have accepted me as a learner. I would say that's I'm thank grateful. you. And thank you for giving me time. I took a lot of time of you. No, no, no. Talk as long as you want. It's just uh, yes, yes, you have. at the beginning. <laughs> And uh, you're always welcome, and your voice is always here to be heard. And thank you, thank you. I don't believe anyone has the right to say anyone is a disbeliever, anyone is a kafir. Um, this is against the teaching of the Holy Prophet. Uh, and so we should all be able to live in the way that we want to live and um, worship Allah as we want to worship Him. And no one has the right to say that against us. So, Jazakla, you're, you're part of us. We're all one body, and you're always welcome. Jazakla, again, Ahmed, for coming on and for, for delivering your beautiful, your beautiful speech. Um, we, have a lot, we have a lot to cover already because uh, um, a few guys already have been waiting to do their next segment. Uh, Mehmet Saab, it would be good for you to, to join and, and carry on uh, watching because we're going to just cover uh, one book of the Promise of Saleh Stato Salam, who we believe um, is, the, is the Messiah, the second coming, and who we accepted as our Messiah mode. So we're right. just going to... As you know, he has written many books. Um, every week we cover one book. Um, we have one one of our brothers who, who does that. So Hamza, if I can go to you quickly, uh, tell us what book we're learning today. Uh, and then after, so just, up, just after that, we're going to have our new segment, which is Allegation Corner. Um, every, the, as you know, Amitab, uh, there's many allegations done against our Jamaat. Um, so we're just trying to answer these allegations slowly. Every week we're going to go through one allegation and try to try to just uh, digest it, dissect it, and understand it. So we'll make it really easy for you and for everyone else to, to learn that as well. So Hamza, let's go to you first, and then, uh, we'll, do Nasir, and then we'll go to, go to Zariyad, if he's still here. Share the screen. Yeah. Go straight to Jazakallah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we start. You guys have... So introduce, introduce your bit as well, uh, Hamza, just so that uh, Ahmed can understand. Ji, Amr Saab, um, so this is one of the many books written by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And um, I'll just show you the title as well. One second. Oh. So yeah, this one is a misconception removed, and it was written by the Promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, in 190. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. One second. Oh. 1901. It was 1901, but I just had some notes as well that I just wanted to go over. Yeah. Yeah. So written 1901, and again, it addresses the true status of prophethood of the Promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam and how his prophethood does not in any way go against the concept of the Holy Prophet وسلم, being the seal of the prophets. It also talks about concepts of zeal, which is like a reflection of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the coming of a prophet and a messenger in the form of Abu Ruz, which is a, a spiritual manifestation of the Holy Prophet So the Prophet وسلم, he starts the book by explaining how early converts to Ahmadiyyad some of them were less familiar with his claims and his supporting arguments. And in their tabligh efforts, they would sometimes deny the Promised Messiah Islam's claim as a prophet and as a messenger. So essentially the purpose of him writing this book was to bring clarity on this issue. He then mentions many of the revelations he had received, uh, where Allah has referred to him as a messenger, an apostle and a prophet. And one of the examples is just shown in this verse here. He it is who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth that he may make it prevail over all other religions. And that's from Brahina Ahmadiyya, which is obviously has another two, 200, 400 arguments, sorry, about the truth of Islam in it. He then talks about Jesus alayhi Islam and that how no prophet, new or old, could possibly descend in the manner that Jesus alayhi Islam came, is to come in the latter days, as, as we interpret by non Ahmadis. And also the idea that an Israelite prophet receive, receiving prophetic revelation, surpassing the period of prophethood of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, such an idea, we believe, is against the concept of Khatam and Nabin or the seal of the prophets. And then the verse shown, which is probably one we've all heard quite a lot from Surah Al Azab, chapter 33, verse 41. But he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Um, Ahmadis, we believe that this has a prophecy in it that after the Holy Prophet, وسلم, the door to prophecies will be closed till the day of judgment to all other religions. And none of the followers of the other religions can claim the title of prophethood and that all doors leading to the Prophet would have closed, except the door of Sadat e Siddiqui, meaning to lose oneself completely in the Holy Prophet He then goes on to talk about the concept of Ziliyat, which I mentioned at the start, and essentially meaning such complete devotion to the Holy Prophet that one begins to reflect his image almost. And so his Prophethood isn't a matter of superseding the Holy Prophet for we can only derive this status from the fountain of the Holy Prophet And any success or glory he achieves isn't his own, but it belongs again to the teachings and to the character of the Holy Prophet He then goes on to talk about the concept of buruz, again, which I mentioned at the start. And by definition, what it is essentially the spiritual manifestation of a prophet or a saint. Like in the Quran, we talk about Jesus Islam or Joshua, which, was also, which is mainly known as. He was a spiritual manifestation or a baruz of Moses Islam. And again, in the Quran, we see that Allah tells the Holy Prophet وسلم, that your prophethood will mirror that of Moses Islam's. The Promised Messiah then goes on to mention that he receives the name Muhammad وسلم, and Ahmed وسلم, in revelation. So if we think of it from that perspective, the prophethood of the latter days in reality, it belongs to the Holy Prophet وسلم, by way of baruz. And again, he was given the names due to his complete devotion and complete love for the Holy Prophet He then mentions the same verse, which I said earlier from Surah Al-Azab and further, extend, further expanding upon it. Muhammad وسلم, is not the father of any of your men, but he's the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And in context, um, it's to say that the Holy Prophet again وسلم, does not have any physical sons, but he has spiritual sons. And the only way of receiving divine grace is through his prophethood. And that the promised one would be in his air in the sense that he will have the same name, the same character, the same knowledge, the same spirituality as that of the Holy Prophet And again, just emphasizing it, he will only acquire this due to his pure love for the Holy Prophet And again, the concept of Buruz, like I said, a spiritual manifestation, it, that, that spiritual manifestation, so the promised Messiah he can't live, his, his existence is dependent on the Holy Prophet there aren't two Ahmads or two Muhammads in the Quran. It's one and the same person because it's spiritually the same person. 
He then explains the concept of um, a Nabi and a Rasul, so a prophet and a messenger. And um, again, the latter days we're talking now, if the appearance of a Nabi is denied, this would suggest that the Ummah present is deprived of God's grace, God's blessings, God's divine communion. And whoever, going back, going to the Quran again, whoever discloses or conveys matters of the unseen on the basis of divine knowledge is by definition a Nabi or a prophet. And this is from, again, from the Quran, from Surah Al-Jinn, chapter 72. He does not grant anyone ascendancy over his domain of the unseen, except him whom he chooses as his messenger. So again, reaffirming that a Nabi or a messenger is one the same thing, receiving information from, the, information from God and relaying it to people. And then the key aspect where Ahmadis and non-Ahmadis differentiate is that we, we believe that a Nabi will come after the Holy Prophet ﷺ, but he cannot bring a new Sharia. He can't bring a new law and new teaching. And then he then goes on to talk about false claimants and that anyone who claims prophethood and even slightly deviates from the teachings of the, and the sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, or the Quran is guilty of breaking that seal of prophethood. But such, and, but such a person who is so lost and so in love with the Holy Prophet وسلم, that he receives his name through divine revelation and reflects his unity and his harmony, such a person is not guilty of breaking that seal, so to speak. And again, I keep mentioning it again, his prophet is by, is by way of zeal or reflection, leaving, so it doesn't, it doesn't in any way impinge or break the mantle of the Holy Prophet وسلم, as the seal of the prophets. And then something that's actually a recurring theme in all of the Promised Islam's books about the acceptance of prayer, and that Muslims have been promised every reward, a spiritual blessing, and material blessing bestowed on, on to earlier prophets. And it's something that we can debate or discuss with non Ahmadis as well, is that these, these are verses that we say every day in, um, when we pray our namaz. Guide us along the right path, the path of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy blessings. It's through this very verse that the Prophet Islam has been designated as a prophet. He also has, poses, he poses a very, uh, quite a logical question, that if someone is bestowed divine revelation, vast knowledge of the unseen from God, and he relays it to people, then what is he except, except a nubby or a prophet? And then the context of the verse is obviously from chapter 4, verses 67 to 70, um, relating to Surah Al-Fatiha. And whoso obeys Allah and his messenger shall be among those on whom Allah has bestowed his blessings, namely the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous, and excellent companions are these. Again, it's with reference to talking about Moses Lay Islam and the blessings that um, Allah had bestowed on the people of Israel. But it's to say that these blessings are also available now to Muslims, the same spiritual blessings of prophets, the highest, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous. And then finally, he comes on to the verse from Surah Al-Jumma, which again, a lot of Ahmadis will have heard, chapter 62, verse 4, and among others, from among, the, among them who have not yet joined them, implying that the message of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was meant for all, not just the Arabs of that time. Also, we can infirm that the Holy, infer, sorry, that the Holy Prophet وسلم, would be raised among another people who have not yet sort of joined his immediate followers. And this verse also relates to the well-known hadith from Bukhari that I'll just read out to you guys. Uh, it's from Abu Hurairah, obviously, uh, and he relates that one day we were sitting with the Holy Prophet وسلم, when Surah Juma was revealed. I inquired of the Holy Prophet وسلم, who are the people to whom this verse refers, and Salman the Persian was sitting amongst us. Upon repeatedly asking him the same question, the Holy Prophet وسلم, put his hand on Salman and said, if faith were to go up to the pliers, a man from these would surely find it. And just very briefly, the Salman, this Salman, by def the, name, the definition of this word name, is two slims, so two kinds of reconciliations. And through the promise of Sayyidah Islam, there would be removal of our internal evils, so our malice, our lust, our rancor, etc. And externally, the excellences and evidence of Islam Ahmadiyyat will manifest to all people from other faiths and it will bring them towards it. And there's also a really good subtlety in the expression of the verse. While it clearly mentions the people who will be counted among the companions in the latter days, it doesn't actually mention who was to come as the spiritual manifestation of the Holy Prophet It doesn't mention through whom those people would be guided to be among the companions, essentially. And there's a, there's a purposeful, purposeful, intentional mission of this person as the Baruz, the Promised Messiah will be a non-entity, meaning he's one and the same person as the Holy Prophet spiritually. And then also, again, a verse that many of us will know from, uh, sorry, a surah, in uh, Nakal Gosar, surely we have given the abundance of goods, so pray to the Lord and offer sacrifice, so surely it is the enemy who is without issue. 
Um, and the abundance of good in this context of this verse would be spiritual blessings as a great number of people would accept the true Islam and become spiritual sons of the Holy Prophet وسلم, as we know none of his actual sons survived past childhood and even though there are various hadith saying and evidence that the Prophet Islam was descended from both Hazrat Fatima Islam and from the Israelites he always gave precedence to his spiritual relationship with the Holy Prophet وسلم, over any other family ties Again, there are, there are so many verses of the Qur'an and Hadith that we can go to, but um, these are some of the main ones from the book. And that's the, that's the crux of, again, a very short book of only about 18 pages. Um, Jazakallah. Jazakallah, Hamza, was really, really good and very insightful. Um, obviously, so many things from that uh, that we can take out of. And, you know, people have written articles just on one of the lines you've written, you know, many, many articles. And many people, you know, say things about the Jamaat in that way. So, Ahmed, uh, for listening uh, purposes, um, we can talk a lot about this. Um, and it's nice that you're on, actually. So, Hamza, if I can just share share my screen as well. So oh, can... I'll, I'll just stop for one sec. Okay. So, it's nice that we have uh, an Ahmadi, a non ahmadi guest uh, on the show as well. Uh, I'll just I'll just share as well with you. Um, uh, a few months ago, Alhamdulillah, in February. Um, <laughs> brothers actually accepted Ahmadi and one of the main things which he was stuck on was was the business was about the Holy Prophet um, being the last prophet and uh, Hazim Asimod is the Messiah so um, he was here he was with me and I'm since accepting that you know I've, I've kept him by my side and I'm always in, in touch with him so I've taken to Wolverhampton as well and one of the classes that we did um, he's from Egypt he came just a few years ago and um, since doing that you know, he's been teaching teaching Arabic classes and, you know, telling people about his story. So I tried to get him on today. It would have been nice to have him, but uh, I think he's a bit busy right now. Inshallah, from next week, we'll be able to have him. So his name is Abdul Mosin, and um, I met him just in February. And he has a really nice story. But one of the main reasons uh, why, he, why he accepted the Jamaat is because of the love that everyone showed him. And uh, he felt part of the family. And when he came to, to Khudam Night, actually, he came to this event, um, he said that, I've, I've felt alive after five years because five years ago his father passed away and he said since that day I just felt like I was nothing and when he came to the Khudam night um, for everyone, everyone who was there and I'm Boris that's one of your first ones I think or second time you came um, he really felt like he was part of something and he felt like uh, everything that he felt before five years ago he was getting back and so Alhamdulillah he's um, since then he's been um, really close to the Jamaat and this is when he did bad. So Ahmed, when you do bad, you, you sign a form to say that you've come into the hold of Ahmadiyyat. And uh, we had a few members there with us and we did dua together. And uh, he's been very regular coming to the mosque as well. So inshallah, from I'll try to get him on to him as well. Uh, his English isn't too great. He's very shy, um, but very spiritual and very humble. And he has a very, a very soft heart. So I just wanted to share that with you as well, because your topic that you spoke on today, Hamza, about... Um, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu being the last Prophet and how you proved it from the Holy Quran, you know, this is something he was trying to get his head around. And once he did, once he understood it, uh, he said this was very logical for me to understand. And everything became very easy to me after that. So that's a really good thing. And it leads me on to the next bit, actually, because you mentioned, I think, on the word, the word Khatim, Khatim and the being, yeah. being the of the Prophet. So Nas, uh, he's uh, taking charge of Allegation Corner now. And uh, he's just going to explain a little bit about what Khatam and Nabi is. And you touched, you touched on it a, lo- a little bit and you explained some of the points already. But Nas, if you can just um, explain, especially for everyone watching, just um, what Khatam means and from the dictionary point of view, from um, the Sahaba's point of view and how we understand it as well. Let me just share my screen. Can everyone see it? Yeah. Uh, Great, there you go, Daz, look, now you're trying to make me laugh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Marabi Saab and I decided to make this new segment called uh, Allegations Corner. Um, we thought it'd be like a good way for if anyone like had any questions or any sort of doubts or anything, you know, especially like, you know, people like uh, Ahmed who's on here today, which is it's quite good and, you know, it's, it's like perfect timing for us to introduce this. Um, you know, if anyone has any questions, we just, we can like go through it and as you said dissect it and answer it in a in like a logical matter where it's you know Quran and then the hadith and what the promised messiah has also said 
So let's just start. And by the way, this is my uh, uh, <laughs> logo, which I'm, I'm working on, but someone <laughs> called a better one. So what, the way we do this is we come up with a statement. So this week's statement is, you're not a Muslim because you don't believe that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the last Prophet. Okay. So this is what a lot of people have said to me personally as well, and I'm sure others have got this. So we're going to go through how you can not only defend yourself, but attack in a way so you can throw the question back onto them. Um, so this is the verse that they'll be referring to. Um, so I'll read out the English translation. Uh, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he's the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah has full knowledge of all things. Now, for me, Kobe by helped me with this as well. And I was going through all of this, you know, finding answers. And, and the thing that was the most scariest thing was that everything is in your face. And it makes you question that, why is that others don't know this? And I went through the commentary, which, and it gives a clear cut answer and the background as to why, um, why this verse was given and why it all means. And I won't read it all out, obviously, but I'll give you a quick um, summary. It's to do with the time of when, I think the Prophet saw some of his opponents, they were, I think they were basically just attacking him and saying that they, they, he has no sons and, and there's no one that's going to be after him. So they were saying, how can you carry on this message? So then um, they mentioned that basically um, how, I don't have to explain it properly, but how um, he's not going to be the father of any men, but spiritually he's the father for everyone. Uh, and that, it wouldn't make sense for, for it to just be just on its own and and it basically explains it very well. I think I think the second Khalifa that had done this commentary yeah. and it explains it uh, quite thoroughly. Yeah, but I think Hamza has mentioned another point on that as well. He said that's when the, the verse Surah Qasr was revealed also. Yeah. And Qasr literally means an abundance of many things. And in the Atena Kal Qasr that we have given you an abundance of things. So Atena Kal Qasr was literally like you know, maybe you don't have any sons physically, but the whole world have, have become your, your spiritual sons and you are the spiritual father. So I think that, that as well, just add on to that point. Um, I think it might be written in the commentary as well that um, that's what um, as Khalifa Sani was also mentioning. Yeah, so like Gerber explained it in a quite a funny way. He said that everyone's there saying to him that he's got no kids and no one's going to be after him. Then why would God just come along and say, oh, you're the last one? It's like rubbing it in your face. So that shows that the word last, but I'll get onto that as well, uh, what Asi Khatan means. So the Prophet he said in Hakikat al-Wahi, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is called here the Lord Privy Seal, or the Lord Keeper of the Great Divine Seal of the Prophethood, which not only ratifies and authenticates the office of the previous prophets, but also awards a distinctive mark of prophethood to those who make themselves worthy of it. Um, and this leads me on to what the word Khatan means. And everyone that all the Gherandis, they always say that it's last, but here it, um, I'll show you in the dictionaries. Um, if, even if you Google it, it comes up with the seal and not last. Mm. And you can see some of the, um, like the translation seal, stamp, conclude, impress, imprint. And if you look at, I've got the pictures of all the main um, dictionaries and they all um, agree as well that it doesn't mean last and it means seal. Mm. Now, if you go through uh, to the companions and the hadith, uh, well, the, just the companions, even uh, the Prophet himself, he called his uncle Hazrat Abbas Khatamul um, Mujahideen, and uh, is um, the last uh, refugee. So it wouldn't make sense for it to be last. You know, it would mean the best. Uh, and similarly with uh, Hazrat Ali, he was called Khatamul Aliyah. Um, and again, it meant he's the most perfect saint and not the last. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, with the, uh, a poet, he called him Khatamu uh, Shura, which obviously didn't mean the last, but it was the best poet. Yeah. Uh, and some of the supporting hadiths is, um, so from uh, Sunan Nasi, volume two, page 35, I am the last of the prophets and my mosque is the last mosque. Now, if you take that literally, why would why would there be any more mosques built after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So it just shows that if you take everything literally, nothing would really make sense. And you have to use common sense to understand everything. And one hadith that people say that is used against us um, is the second one here, there is no prophet after me. Now, 
if you look at again in a literal sense you know it, it works against us but again if you look at it in, and you understand it um, it, it means law bearing profit and someone to come with a law someone to come with a message which was the Quran and and just to have that last word and um, this is again is confirmed by Hazrat Aisha where she said um, oh ye people who should say the Holy Prophet is Khatam and Nabiin but do not say that there will be no prophet after him and this obviously um, confirms that it doesn't mean last again and uh, the last one is Abu Bakr is the most exalted person in my Ummah except the advent of the future of the prophet in the future and again this shows that there will be a prophet afterwards and you know it's not last and there will be others and uh, this is the contradiction of non mds um, so i'll read this out the above references are more than enough to fully satisfy the meaning of khatam to be sealed rather than last if their translation the word last is put into practice this would inevitably cause havoc within the muslim ummah are they themselves now waiting for Jesus? How, how can they ever accept the latter day Messiah if the Holy Prophet stated himself he, uh, he is a Nabiullah four times in a single hadith? Um, this shows the only difference that is, we M, these Muslims, believe that the Holy Prophet has already come, whereas they are still waiting for one. And just to finish off, um, which uh, the, the promised Messiah, Islam, he said in one of his books, and I think it was a speech. Um, it was the charge made against me and my community that we do not believe the messenger of Allah peace be upon him to be the seal of the prophets is a big falsehood the faith, the conviction, certitude and the utterness that characterize our belief in the holy prophet as the seal of the prophets are markedly absent in the belief of those people that those who level this charge at us and Jazakallah that's perfect, in a nutshell that's pretty much what Khatam is and I see you did really good research there. It's always different, you know, explaining it. Sometimes we know we know what, what it means or get the gist of it. But so I know it's a bit different trying to explain it to everyone um, exactly what Khatam means. So it just bounces off what everything Hamza you said in the book. So it's just nice. It was nice to really, really look forward to um, uh, always answering another allegation. This was probably the, one of the biggest ones. So you chose the yeah, biggest one to do. I maybe I shouldn't start on this, but you know, it's perfect. <laughs> So good, it's good, it's good. And it's going to keep coming up, so you know, just keep answering them. And anyone who has any other input to do, they can always add it um, later on. Um, anything else, guys, if anyone else asks any questions? Actually, I just want to say um, that these, obviously, I've done this whole um, presentation. It's not that I'm someone who's qualified to do it or anything like that. It's simple stuff that's just out there. And it's just to do like a bit of research and to find the right resources and anyone can do this um and especially obviously i've been inspired by uh mv answers as more of knows it you know, these videos it it makes you like proud to be an ahmed and it just makes it so clear cut on what we believe to be so true and so simple whereas others like other muslims have more innovations and complicate things whereas we've just gone straight back to what the sahaba and prophets are so and this is just testimony to show that you know you don't need to be you don't need to be a murabi, you don't need to be a leader in your faith. I'm a leader for every single person. Every single person for everyone to understand, even children. You know, when we talk about the concept of the jal and things like that, even children understand, you know, this is the other non Ahmadis believe is totally wrong. So Ahmadiyat is for every single person, just like Islam is for every single person. So it's good that we have a, someone else talking about it just to get that perspective. So Jazakallah man, uh, Hamza Nasir, wicked, really good. So just let's go to the last bit quickly, uh, Zariab. Um, I know that we, we're going to do your bit now. Finish off, nice to finish off on a good note. Yeah, so come on, guys. So uh, as again, because if you were in the beginning, there's a good news and bad news. Actually, they're both good news. Yeah. So the good news is that we've got good news that Anas is yeah. sharing it. So okay. there's the pin code for you to join. Yeah. And Emma's Bay, I'd just like to say I'm sorry. I, I I didn't realize you were joining today. This is the quiz is quite empty biased in terms of knowledge. So uh, <laughs> next time, if no one else is so we will. Uh, if if you can tell me if anyone bring in external guests, we we'll try to do it more relative to Islam rather than Emma. No problem. Emma, tukka na ho tukka. I don't know if he's still on though. So we will, uh, if, I'm <laughs> <laughs>
So should we join then, uh, Duryab? Yeah, yeah. So there's the pin code. Everyone free to join. Whoever wants, whoever's ready to um, win. Uh, are you running it or is Anis running it? Anis, are you running it? Yeah, yeah. So there's the other one. I think we have a with the sound. Apologies, as he said that he's gonna go because of the family. I think Z should call out the questions as he's made it. I think the credit is due there, isn't it? <laughs> Exactly, Hamza. If he's already gone properly. So you guys, whoever's, whoever's left, you know, let's get this, let's get this done. I was going to say, yeah. I was going to say, if anyone needs my presentation, just let me know. I don't mind sending it as long as you. Yeah. No. Exactly. Also, I'm worried about the presentation. It's it's going to be on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> we want it with your voice. <laughs> do send it, man. Do send it on the on the group if you can. You know, it's it's it's, good, it's got very good points and uh, you know points that we can all benefit from. So yeah, do share it on the Khudam Night group if you can, please. I just want to make it as simple and not something that you know people just switch off and think it's too complicated. And any of the very good, bread. Talked about it even. Yeah. Who's Hajisab? Hajisab. Yeah. <laughs> well, has always got funny names, so it's probably him. <laughs> I think we buy one last time, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. The silent, silent horse. No, no, I think I think he's at forums right now. I don't know. He's, I don't know where he is. I think he's out, but he's he's still listening on the phone. Is his cue then? Isn't that him? Yeah, that is him. Yeah, I think I think he's just joined. Well, I think he was here the whole time, actually. Yeah, yeah. Put him as well. Put him on as well. Is he? Yes. He's being sneaky right now. Is everyone seven people? One, two, three, four, five. Nazir will have Yeah. Okay. So give it a start then. Let's give it a start. Push the red button. Oh, can you keep it to 20, man? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, who is the second Sahaba, as you mentioned in today's khutbah? Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right then. So, next question, guys. Who's coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Well, who is the parent company of Audi? Oh, what? Oh, okay. Volkswagen. Is it Volkswagen? Oh, oh my I said that. That's the wrong <laughs> it's Volta. There you go. Yeah, it's Volkswagen. Yeah, okay. So, Can you give us some background information on these answers as well. Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah, Volkswagen own loads of stuff, man. If I answer, we'd be here till nine if I told you what they own. Nah, it's like Skoda, Audi, yeah. uh, Seat, Porsche, know. Lamborghini, Bugatti, everything. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right oh. then. Just another motoring question, then we go back to the normal. So, what does BMW stand for? <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest. No. Is that your BM? <laughs> Always been yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Bavarian Motor Works. Complete guess. All right then. Um, That's enough for the motoring question. That, that was because I had two photos in my phone, so I was like... <laughs> oh my God, nothing. Can we bail on it again? <laughs> okay, what is the name of the Islamic bath? What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my god. That's funny. What do you mean yeah. the <laughs> Muslim style? The gusal. <laughs> <laughs> right then. No, he's on it. No, he's on it. He's been having them. He's been having them gusals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, to dream of the promised Messiah, Islam, when which us, we see it started, the graves, 
were covered in gold. Is that true or false that he saw in the dream? So he saw a dream and which from which he had started. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, it, they were actually covered in silver. They were silver. Okay. Multiple balls. Oh, I got that wrong. doing this with the kings. Okay. What is the meaning of the last word in Sur and in that verse? Kolaus bin Nas. The name of. Why did you stop after the first line? <laughs> did you forget? Lord of. What is the meaning of Nas? Emergency yes. one Nas. Mankind. Right then. Oh, he's knocking on the door. Okay. So, sorry, that was meant to say biggest contributor. So the biggest contributor to the Earth's oxygen. Is it the Indian jungles, the Amazon rainforest, Alaska, or the African trees? African trees. The rainforest. Oh. Everyone got it right. Mashallah. Mashallah. If he's good. <clears throat> Which yeah. of these countries can you not buy Coca Cola? I know this one. I'm there's sure. Actually, there's actually two of them that are right, but because we've got the basic version, yeah, you can choose one. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the same position as two, but I forgot what the other one was. Yeah. So I think that question that, was last that, time right? as well. There was a few weeks ago yeah. we had that question, isn't it? I had the same question. Yeah, yeah. Good, we're paying attention. The most visited country in the world. Ooh. Visited. That, I don't know why I put that picture there. It's just someone's back garden. <laughs> <laughs> Is it England? Could it be England? No. It must be no. I got it. England. Oh, France. Oh, nobody. You know. Wow. I wouldn't expect that, to be honest. Yeah, it's just <clears throat> a birth country. Man. I hope it. I hope it was right. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Who started the Buckfinnell scheme? Oh God! Oh. 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 No. Mashed it, boys. <laughs> when did it start? Third oh, April, um, nineteen eighty-four. Oh. It's 5 a.m. Then I give the time. <laughs> Nine p.m. Octopus has purple blood. True or false? Blood or poison? Blood. Which is not um. Don't say if no one. Do you have any background information on that? Oh, yeah. That yeah. The blood isn't. That's the thing you squirt isn't blood. That's just some squirt thing. Interesting. You got it right. That's nice. That's nice now. Okay, square root of 196. Uh, let's Google now. It's too late. 196, 196. Quick maths. The answer is five. Is it thirteen? Ah, uh, fourteen. Boy, that uh, coming up. Come on, man. I've been getting all of them wrong so far. Where is the Taj Mahal? Come on, oh, come on, bro. That is easy. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 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 Amritsar. What's GOT? Oh, it's, no. meant, it's meant to say Goa, but oh, yeah. thankfully no one's. Oh, it's going to be India, <laughs> Pakistan, or something like man, England. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. It's not in Delhi. Nah, Accra. Oh, my days. Increase my knowledge. When was Azul born? What year? Oh, no. Don't do this to me, man. I saw guesses. 
1950. That would make him how old? 59. 59 or 60? Uh, not, I think his birthday is soon. It's not. It's this year, but he's not 70 yet. <clears throat> I'm going to give him back 15, I think. Finish the title of one of Khalifa Rabi Ramla's books, Murder in the Name of. Oh. Come on, Kabi. Come on, this one, man. Oh, Neil. <laughs> Murder in the name of Allah. I don't know why I thought it was religion. Uh, Kobe got it right. It's me and you, man. <laughs> Let's go. I just saw catching you. But I'm a lemon, the album was founded in which decade? I think that was on the Tariq magazine as well recently. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. Yeah, it was 1930. Does anybody know? 38 or some 37? I can't remember. Yeah. I thought, hopefully, I think it's 8 or 7. Oops. <laughs> Yes, boys. Come on, dear. Ibrahimovic plays for which club now? Easy. Galaxy. Oh, Did he retire? Is he retired? No. <laughs> He's out for the season though again. He still has two years contract. He's back in. Well, moved to Milan. Oh. You play for Inter Milan, AC Milan. For AC Milan, AC Milan. Oh. All right, then. Come on. Which of these animals can't produce noise from their mouth? Very <laughs> 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 That's so hard. I don't even know. Mm. Yeah. They don't act, the giraffes actually don't have any vocal cords. Vocal cords. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Nice one, though. Nice one. No one got it right in the top. <laughs> Pro- true or false? The promise of Messiah, less than I believe Jesus was alive in heaven before revelation from God. In heaven? Yeah, it's true. He also <laughs> believed that as well. Okay. And, until. Uh, oh, wow, well, yeah. Four questions. Come on. What is it? What is it? The first book published by the Promised Messiah Les Salam was. Was. Oh. Before what? he was Promised Messiah or after? Well, well yeah, Barina Media. Message of Peace was the last one. Yeah. In which book did the Promised Messiah Les Salam write the Arabic Qasida? Uh, that's easy. Um, you don't take that much effort, right? I don't know if you want to Sorry, the only one that's not in English. Come on. How do you sub? How do you sub smashing it? Can't catch him. Can't catch him. Who was the first Sahaba then as I mentioned in today's Qutba? That's not fair. How do you say I did the Khulasa today, man? <laughs> come on, come on. Yes, boys. People have been listening. Right, so this last question isn't really a question, it's just more of an informative of uh, what we can do now on our platforms. It wasn't really a question to compete with, but true or false, Nizams are available on Spotify and Apple Music. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> wow, who put false? wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, they're on Spotify and Apple Music now. Oh, man. I think it's the first time winner for Haji Sub. 
Go back him. Adisson, can you reveal yourself? <laughs> yes, sir. How do you feel dropping from first to third? Well, to be, to be fair, you've won it two times already. <sighs> Zakla guys. Zakla guys, I've got to shoot off. I've got to. Zakla is really good. Zakla Anis is off for, for running that. Thank you, Anis. And uh, Anis looks in, uh, very nice today in the brown shirt of Alchemies. He's inspired me. <laughs> Can I just say? Can you come to Alchemies next time, please? I look homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Zakla guys. Hey, no, guys. Yeah, got anything to say before we, before we close? Before we close. I know it took up a lot of your time today, guys. I'm really sorry about that. Um, unexpected guest, but I think everyone would agree it was really beneficial for everyone to hear that as well. Yeah, no, that's actually like proper good timing in it for, for him to come as well. And I, I have no idea he would come on. He just, Mabad just messaged me saying he's coming on. And then uh, it fitted in perfectly, like a puzzle. Yeah. I stole a few more lines as well. <laughs> And it's all good, yeah. Good morning, Zakla. Zakla, appreciate it. Good afternoon, son. Can we take a? Thank you, guys. Allah Hafiz. Good afternoon. Bye. Right. Right, just uh, keep it up, man. Keep making.